We're using the phone. We're using the um, phone to translate at the moment. Did you have a good time? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> translator that I had, uh, Yvonne, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, it, this was her first time translating, translating so ah. I felt like I was kind of <laughs> training them both. Um, yeah, but that's good, you already were in bait, so you know how it is. Right, yeah. yeah. No, but she was, she was fantastic. But when she walked, yeah, when she walked into the, uh, the cafe, I thought, oh my god. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you understand a little English. Do entiendes un poquitico de inglés? Sí, a little, a little. Poquito, poquito. Feeling good. good. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, no expectations. Uh, you don't do these things with expectations. You just you, you take it one girl at a time. It's just it's it's meeting. It's just meeting girls. first table to get into the groove because it's kind of different the flow here as opposed to the Ukraine um, a because here your your translator kind of already has all the information on you yeah. so she kind of takes the lead yeah. um, you know and she and she introduces me to everyone yeah. then she has everyone you know introduce themselves yeah. and stuff um, and because of course you know we're doing the speed dating thing um, so we're limited for time.
it. Are you ready to get married? Right now? <laughs> no, not right now. <laughs> Yeah. How you doing, Dave? Long time no see. Joe, it's good to see you again. It's great to see you. Yeah. Your story, probably one <laughs> of the most interesting stories a foreign affair has ever experienced. Well, it, it, it definitely isn't what I expected. Uh, tell me, uh, start at the beginning, Dave. Where are you actually from? Tell me first. Well, I'm from uh, the New York area, New Jersey. Uh, that's where I've lived for about the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. I was raised in Los Angeles, raised my children in Las Vegas, moved east because of my wife's illness. Uh, find better doctors. But uh, ultimately she passed away from cancer uh, five months after my daughter passed away from cancer. To put it mildly, was pretty devastated. I, I didn't want to do anything. I remember telling my children that I'm going to move into the basement of, of a three flat that I owned and I'll call them every Saturday, and if one Saturday I don't call them, call the police to come and check on me because I'm gone. And I really just didn't care anymore. But I knew that, you know, because of my religious beliefs, I couldn't take my own life or anything, and I wouldn't do anything like that. But, um, yeah, it was all just, I wasn't happy, let's put it that way. I was, I and missed her. Was that? Uh, that? That was, she passed away in January of 17. So two years ago, a little more now. For many years, I, even with my wife, we would look at a foreign affairs website just to see these, you know, these people from all over the world that are willing to change their life. She didn't get jealous. No, she used to tell me, oh, come, look at this one. You know, I mean, it, it was great. Mm -hmm. And then you're seeing other lands and where people live and such. Uh, where back when I was young, you weren't allowed to look at Soviet area. Yeah. So it, it was interesting for us both, never thinking that someday I'm going to actually go on a tour, you know, right. because she wouldn't be with me anymore. And then uh, about a year later, my daughter uh, came home and said, I need to get up out of the chair and go someplace. She goes, you know, take a trip, travel, go do something. Uh, she jokingly said, if nothing else, it'll get you out of that robe and I can wash it for you finally, you know? <laughs> but I started thinking that my wife and I used to go on trips, we used to take cruises. I don't want to do any of that because I'll be surrounded by other couples and I'd, I'd just be devastated because I'm alone. I don't want to go on a tour to Europe because I'm with other couples and I'd be devastated. So what can I do? And I remembered loveme.com. And I got on it and I said, you know, there's a tour coming up. It'll be nothing but single guys. So I'll feel right at home. I get to go to a country. I mean, I don't have to meet women. I mean, I could just go to travel and, and well, be a tourist. And at the same time, maybe, you know, interact with some people again. To coin a phrase, get out there. Mm -hmm. I looked at the site. I saw there was a tour coming up and said, why not? I booked the tour right away. And it was great. I mean, it, it, the, um, the way a foreign affair handles everything, you know, the, the setups and such, and the schedules and everything w was exactly what I needed, what I wanted to look for. And, uh, and I did. It was a bunch of nice guys. The staff is incredible. I mean, it was just really nice, you know. And um, I, I really felt at home and I felt comfortable. And so... Uh, and I do remember you on the first day telling me that you're, you're not ready to date. Yeah, um, absolutely. And so we set up something uh, for you just to see. I just see wanted to see. Uh, Helen took me around and showed me the center in Kiev. And, and Helen and Ole both, who work for AFA, were, were very helpful and understanding. And, and, but they did try to get me to, there's, we know a couple of nice girls, maybe you want to you know, meet with them and such. And I said, well, okay, what the heck, I, you know. But uh, now I understand when I was 20 years old and used to go to a discotheque, how the women used to feel. Right. Because, I mean, I had 23-year-olds coming up to me, beautiful women, don't get me wrong. I mean, oh my gosh, they're gorgeous all the way up to 50 year olds and everything in between. And I'm, you know, I wasn't really interested in dating or anything, but I'm also a realist. That's, I'm not interested in dating a young girl. 
I'm a little older here. I mean, you know, I'm 60 years old. I'm, what am I going to do, you know? So I've already raised my family, you know? Um, so I, I really, uh, you know, it, it was somewhat uncomfortable for me because that wasn't really what I was there for. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I didn't want to go to the next city. Which was which, Poltava. Poltava. That's right. I was not interested in going. I did not want to go to another social. And I remember you telling me I, I, that you didn't want to go. Yeah, I, I even said, no, I'll pay for a hotel myself. I'll stay. It's not a big deal. I'll just sightsee around Kiev. I mean, it, it's fine. This is the capital. And that's really what I wanted to do. And you and Helen uh, with AFA talked me into it. You kept on, no, just go, just go. And despite my reservations, yeah, I said, okay, fine, I'll go, I'll just catch a cab the next day if I don't like it or whatever and come back. We talked about that. Right. And I came. Uh, I didn't even go uh, on the tour of the city. Mm -hmm. I, I just stayed in the room. And then when it came time to go to the social uh, with the rest of the group, you know, I wandered on over to the club and I walked in and I'll never forget it. I walked into the club and there was this woman sitting at the corner of a dance floor in the booth, sitting on the end. And I hate to say cliches, but I mean, stopped me in my tracks. And there was nobody else there. And I felt like a 15 year old boy in high school that <laughs> had a crush on some girl. My, my interpreter, Ina, who was wonderful, said, oh, go talk to her. And I said, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. And then I remember saying, look at her eyes. And she said, yes. And I said, they're sad. I said, she's gone through something like what I've gone through. Hello, Nina. Hello, Joe. How have you been? Um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Good? <laughs> yes, okay. yes. You're not too comfortable explaining in detail yes. English. Yeah. So we have it translated. We have Alicia. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Alicia. to translate for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I, I'm now start to uh, talk uh, Ukrainian because for me it's been a little more easy. And uh, <laughs> yes, я находилася в Полтаві, навчалася в Полтаві, закінчила школу і університет також закінчила в Полтаві. She was born in Poltava here. Uh, then uh, she uh, finished university and finally got married here in Poltava, yeah. in native city. Uh, Потім у мене народилося двоє чудових дітей від мого першого чоловіка. І в 2016 році так сталося, що мій чоловік помер від раку. Then she got two children from her husband, first husband, and they were very happy together, but in 2016 he passed away. And you have two daughters. Yes, two daughters. Yeah. Two perfect daughters. And their names are Mariana it's first and Maraslava is second. <laughs> and they are, what, how old are they? Uh, 10 and 8. 10 yes. And so how long were you married for? Uh, we be almost 11 years. Yeah. 11 years? Yes. Okay. You said that he actually passed away in 2016? We know Так, так, yeah. Do you mind sharing with us from what? How Так. В 2012 році чоловік грав футбол і впав. У нього була невеличка травма. Згодом ця травма лікарі діагностували в нього рак. Тобто це спонукало, ця травма спонукала виникнення цього цієї хвороби. And um, he was uh, examined, and they discovered that he had cancer. Uh, that uh, injury uh, caused, um, uh, the tr uh, triggered the disease. Протягом чотирьох років ми намагалися боротися з цією хворобою, але хвороба виявилася значно сильніша для нас. For four years, four years they were trying to uh, cure him, to recover. They were fighting this disease, but uh, eventually the disease uh, got um, stronger than they were. Um. Проте протягом цих чотирьох років ми все одно залишалися дуже щасливими, тому що я розуміла, що 
коли ти кохаєш людину понад усе, то найголовніше, що він поруч. І тому я намагалася як можна довше бути поруч з своїм чоловіком. Поруч з моїм офісом є офіс брачного агентства. І одного разу, коли я йшла на роботу, дівчина з цього брачного агентства, вона мені вручила білет на вечірку. Так, на вечірку. Вона мені подарувала два білети, тобто я мала піти не одна, я мала піти з моєю подругою, але сталося так, що моя подруга не прийшла цього вечора, і я була одна. Так, я залишилася, вирішила залишитися, адже я прийшла, тобто в мене не було вибору, я мала залишитися. Але коли я зайшла, я відчула себе дуже дискомфортно, оскільки поруч було дуже багато незнайомих мені людей, і тому я думала, можливо, я тут залишуся кілька хвилин, можливо, півгодини, і потім я залишу це місце. Тобто не було великого бажання залишатися, бо я ж була одна. I found out that her husband had died from cancer in between the time that my daughter and my wife had died. So about the same time, two months before my wife had passed away, her husband passed away. And she did not want to go to America. She was very, I live here, my friends are here, this is it. Uh, she, and that she had two daughters. And it was just nice talking to her. Uh, she asked very simple questions like, what's your name, how are you doing, um, uh, how do you feel about this party, and, um, uh, but uh, for this mom few moments uh, she felt that she was really interested in this person and wants to know more. Uh але він трошки порозмовляв і швидко під мене пішов. І я хотіла ще більше з ним порозмовляти, але він вже відійшов від мене. The rest of the night I didn't do anything but watch her and every time anybody would walk up to that table, I don't know why, I just felt like Don't, if you talk to her, so help me, you know. And uh, Ina, again, my interpreter, kept saying, well, go ask her to dance or something. And finally I told her, I said, listen, if they play a slow song, I'll ask her. 
And again, I guess God heard that because the <laughs> next song was a slow song. <laughs> okay. And about that time, I saw somebody walking towards her table, and I ran from the third floor down to her table and asked her if she would dance. I didn't even get all the words out, and she was already saying yes. Yes, I would. Uh, you knew it was on his mind. Так, і перший танок він був особливим, тому що в перший раз в житті я відчула в обіймах Девіда якийсь неймовірний спокій. Я відчула, що я захищена і відчула таке неймовірне тепло. Тобто я зрозуміла, що хоч з цим чоловіком мені не треба нічого боятися, тобто я буду в повній безпеці, я буду захищена. І це настільки були приємні відчуття. Що мені хотілося танцювати майже весь вечір, але музика закінчилася. Felt for the first time in her life, and uh, she wanted to keep dancing uh, in this uh, peaceful uh, state uh, to continue it longer. But unfortunately, the music stopped. And you had to get back to your daughters. Oh, yes, I must come back. <laughs> I, yes, I don't have choice. I must. <laughs> That night, I was crying because I was thinking about my wife. And I was thinking, am I, am I just, you know, being unfaithful to her? Am I being, is it wrong for me to have these, these feelings for this woman that I just now met? I mean, what is going on with me? I grabbed a cab that morning and went back to Kiev to continue my sightseeing and go back to the United States and, and live out whatever days I have left. But I never, never let go of that little piece of paper that she wrote Her name, would you get it? Get it for me? Oh, sure. I never let go, of, it's in my Bible. I never let go of that little piece of paper that she wrote her email on and her phone number and her name. And I kept it in my wallet and then when I got home I even put it on my nightstand in the bedroom. So, and every morning I would see it and every night and I would think about it and I would pray and I would talk to my wife about it. And she had emailed me and <laughs> <laughs> Not a very nice email, <laughs> kind of direct and to the point. She was um, waiting for him to make a phone call, um, and there wasn't any <laughs> phone calls. So she got mad and decided um, to text him and ask him what happened. Mm -hmm. David, this is Nina. Remember me? <laughs> We met in Poltava. Why haven't you written? And she included a picture to say, you know, this is me. It took me about a week, but finally I, I couldn't help it. I emailed her and I just poured it all out to her. I said, listen, I fell in love with you the second I saw you sitting there before I even talked to you. And I, I don't understand it. I don't know why. I just know how I feel for you. And that the rest of my life, I'd want to make you happy if I had the opportunity. And I say, if you don't answer me back, I understand. I wish you the best, et cetera, you know. But I just felt that I owed it to you to tell you. When he told you while he was falling in love with you, how did that make you feel? Спершу я злякалася, оскільки um, я зрозуміла, що у цього чоловіка дуже сильне почуття до мене, і я була не впевнена, чи на цей момент я готова відповісти тим самим. At the moment she wrote uh, the letter from David, uh, she understood that she was frightened because uh, uh, she herself wasn't ready for those feelings that he already had for her. It first was fear. Оскільки мене чоловік помер всього лише два роки тому, тому я думала, що я не готова до цих почуттів. Я намагалася себе якось зберегти, тобто не давати собі можливості відчути якісь сильні почуття, бо це могло мене дуже сильно вразити на цей момент. Her heart wasn't ready for that. She was afraid of new feelings and she thought that they might uh, hurt her. 
He goes, uh, you know, I'm not ready for anything right now. Just want to be friends, you know, if that's okay. And I said, of course, I'd rather be your friend than nothing. For the next couple of months, we communicated first via email and then via text and then Facebooking constantly. And then, you know, one, uh, one wonderful day, she asked me if I ever thought I'd come back to Poltava again. And I said, uh, you know, through, through texting, I said, do you want me to come back? And she says, um, yeah, it'd be nice. It's true. Right? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, because let them understand I won't see again, David. Uh, it's, it's not be possible, say me stop. <laughs> I won't see again. So I made a phone call to the travel agency. I bought a ticket, said I'll be there Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so I came and I, I called her from, uh, I'll never forget, uh, my phone wasn't working. So some other people in, at baggage claim, they called her for me and they were talking to her in Ukrainian. I'm here now, and I heard her giggling, that nervous kind of giggle, and I go, oh, this is good. It sounds like she's happy I'm here. First, she had told me what, she'd see me on Tuesday, but then she decided she'll stay and she'll see me Monday night, and maybe we'll have a little bite to eat when I get to Poltava. So um, I guess you could say that we had our official first date, you know, that evening uh, at the hotel and uh, they have a nice restaurant, and we both ordered Caesar salads, and we started talking to each other via Google Translate. It's good that you even remember what meal you had. Oh yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, it was great. And the next day, we went for a walk, and uh, here in Poltava, if you get married, there's one house you have to go to. It's government house, and they're the one that issues the license, and literally, legally marry you. I mean, when they give you the license. And we were walking past this and she was explaining to me that that's where her and her husband had gotten married and that's where you get married at. And she asked me if I'd marry her. She asked you? Yes, this was Tuesday. I got there Monday and Tuesday she asked me and I said, yes, absolutely. Were you serious? Um, uh <laughs> Я скажу чесно, це був було лише на на половину, на половину жарт. Тобто, мабуть, я я це сказала, бо, мабуть, взагалі я цього хотіла. Так. Um, to be frank, she would like to say that uh, it was only half joke, uh, but uh, yeah. she knew that part of her heart wanted it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Nina, let me tell you, if you think I am kidding, I am not. I would marry you right now if you would. But she thought I was joking. Of course, if she thought I was serious, she'd probably run because, it's, you know, <laughs> we haven't even been, to, you know, seen each other for 24 hours. And, mm -hmm. But uh, we continued our walk and she showed me around a little bit and we just had a wonderful day, a wonderful lunch. And by the end of the week, because she's a, a landscape architect, and she had a lot of work to do, but she wasn't getting any of her work done because every morning I would wait for her on the balcony because she always walked by this hotel on her way to work. And I would see her and, you know, we'd have a cup of coffee or something, and then she'd go to work late. And then after work or during lunch, she'd come and we'd have a bite and spend some time together and she'd work, leave work early. So she said, I'm not getting any work done. You have to leave. And I said, okay, if you want me to go, I will go. She said, I want you to go, but can you stay one more week? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, sure. And, you know, I'm sure she'll tell you her side of it, but without any question by then, I mean, it was just so obvious. Even the manager at the hotel knew that I loved her and knew that she loved me. And why it happened so fast, I don't know, but the bottom line is two months later, we were married. And uh, we bought a new flat together and I want to make sure that Americans out there understand this. She contributed every penny she had towards buying that flat too. It wasn't just gimme gimme. As a matter of fact, the very few disagreements we have had over the past year, and not even arguments because we've never argued, have been because she's trying to save money on things that I think you shouldn't save money on. It's like, listen, honey, we can afford it. Right. It's okay, you know? Yeah. Uh, I have definitely been blessed in many, many ways. And not just my wonderful, beautiful wife, but the two children that she has given to me 
a 10-year-old Mariana, an 8-year-old Marislava, that I am their papa now. And I love them as much as I love Sophia, the new baby. And I'm actually adopting them uh, so that it, it will be completely legal and, and proper. Dave, Nina, we're with the whole, fa well, most Almost. of the family. Yes, we have you Mary. Introduce? This is Mariana, my 10-year-old daughter. She is wonderful, very smart. And even smarter sometimes is Marislava, our eight-year-old daughter, who gets kind of temperamental sometimes. <laughs> so what grade are they in? Uh, what grade would you call it? You're in five yeah. and you're in two or three or something like two. that? Two? <laughs> yeah, they, two and five. It's a little different than the U.S. Stool. <laughs> Well, the kids are going to be calling, so the driver brings them. Okay. Driver? Of course, they even go to a private school now. Nice. It's one of the best in Ukraine. Very good school. <laughs> and so, we were having a little bit of a discussion earlier about who proposed to who. Okay. I'm first. <laughs> okay, which she claims that she was points. first, which, which was good. Uh, official proposal, I did twice. Yeah. Twice? You had to do it twice? Well, the one time was at the hotel <laughs> yeah. um, when I asked her if she would marry me, and she said she would. And uh, then, I, knowing this, I had to go back to the United States to get some papers together because of my previous wife. And when I came back... I had a ring. Oh, you wearing it? Oh, no, no. I, I had, I had uh, an engagement ring, a yes. diamond ring for her. And at the airport, because our daughters were there, yes. I got down on a knee and right asked near, her, yes, right in yes, the airport, yes. asked her in Ukrainian, which yes. the stewardesses yeah. on the airline <laughs> helped me to learn. It would be a big surprise for me. Uh, if she would marry me. And I, she said yes, and I put the ring on. I think she said yes just because she was embarrassed and wanted me to get up. <laughs> but either way, it worked. Yes. And I put the ring on her finger, and uh, it, it was official. Yeah. Great. That's, that's beautiful. So you went to Paris on your honeymoon. There's a story even there. Um, when she had said yes, I said, I, I can't match what she's given me. She's given me because God took away one daughter and a wife and now she's given me two daughters and a wife. Three. And, well, three. <laughs> but, you know, at the time it was two. Um, so I said, but what I can give you is the world. So for our honeymoon, any place in the world you want to go, we'll go. And uh, that's when she had told me that ever since she was a little girl, you know, watching television, Paris was a dream. Uh, coming from a woman that, that only three or four times in her entire life she ever left Poltava. Uh, once or twice to Kiev, and then three times because her husband was sick to Kharkov. But other than that, it never even left Poltava. So Paris was a huge deal for her. And, and I said, Nina, was Paris everything you thought it would be? We spent a wonderful week in Paris. Grandpa watched the kids, and we got to spend a week in Paris. So when, David, did you find out that you were going to get a third time? <laughs> yeah, uh, considering my youngest is 30 years old previously, <laughs> previous to these two, for her birthday, which was December 2nd, uh, we decided to go to Rome. I wanted to go. And we thought this is perfect. It's a quick little trip. We could take the girls and see how they liked traveling because our goal in life, or mine at the time, was, well, we got some pretty sizable you know, young ladies here. We can travel all over Europe together right. and just start spending time traveling. Um, so we thought this would be a good test to see how they handle flight because they've never been on a plane, travel, going to new exotic places, etc. So we went to Rome, and while in Rome, I think it was the second or third day we were second day? Uh, no. Third? Yeah. Okay. About yeah. the third day, uh, she woke up and said, um, 
I think maybe you should go to the pharmacy and and get a test, a mm-hmm. uh, pregnancy test. And I kind of looked at her with, uh, like most men in the world would look at a woman, especially when you're my age. Okay, so I guess the drugs here in Ukraine don't always work. <laughs> <laughs> she read it, I read it, and it said it takes 10 minutes to tell. Uh, I think it was, how many minutes did it actually take? Um, I think not one. <laughs> <We don't. laughs> it was pretty quick, there was no doubt. And she came out, and I must admit, she was a little bit nervous to tell me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I tell you, you know, God knows what we want and what we need long before we do. And when I, when she told me at first, I was a little, well, that's going to change things. <laughs> but I couldn't be happier. And even now, she still says sometimes, you know, you wanted to travel, and now we have a baby. And I said, so what? I have a baby. I, you know, I mean, what could, what's more important than these children? I have to admit, Dave, from the last time I saw you and now, completely different person. I mean, you can't stop smiling. I, I, well, this is why. Look, right. uh, you know, I mean, like I said, God took one daughter and my wife, and he gave me a wonderful wife and three daughters mm-hmm. in replace. So, I mean, and I am Papa. To this one, I'm a monkey tree because she likes to climb all over me and hang on me. To this one, I just like her teddy keeps jumping in my pocket. (laughs) No. We have a lot of fun together, but they understand. You know, they they do. uh, They love me as their papa. They respect me as their papa. And they're wonderful children. Uh, I couldn't ask for anything better, including our baby. I mean, of course. And my wife, wow. An incredible story, it really is. Obviously right now, there are many, many men watching this from the website, you know, and if you can actually tell them, you know, one thing, what would it be? If you're for real, if what you're looking for and what you want is true, you could find it here with the real woman who will love you more than you'd ever think possible and that you would love more than you would ever think you can. You just have to give it the chance and be real. I want to say that if the people who have never had hope, they will not be able to hope, if they have hope, they will find their own half. People should never lose their faith. The only way this could have happened is with divine intervention, to put it mildly. I mean, there's her husband and my wife got together and they went to the big guy and said, listen, we have to get these two together. Because believe me, if any couple need each other, it's them. And let me tell you, I need her so much. She is my life now. And, uh, and, and I thank God all the time for her.